so i have taken these examples from the book data structures made easy by narsima karuvanchi so that is one of the best book which is available uh, you can you can use this book there are different books which are available number one is data structures for gate by narsima karuvanchi and the next book which is which you can use is data structures made easy by narsima karuvanchi okay so the content of the both books are same uh, very similar or you can say exactly same but the thing is in the first book we have discussed more gate problems but in this book uh, uh, there are more different examples which are which has taken plus this book is for university examination right so you can use this book and i think uh, this concept is given very good in that book or you can also use the standard book, author book which is the corman book fine but i can uh, but i will say you can use the first book uh, for this concept okay now let us see the first question in this case you can see we have initially the value of i is 1 and the value of s is 1 fine now while s is less than equal to n right in that case we can say this condition is true when one is less than n this condition is true let us see how the value of i is going initially the value of i was 1 then we have initial the value of s was 1 then we have i plus plus therefore we have to increment the value of i and the value of i will become 2 and the next value of s will become s is equal to s plus i so it is going to be 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 therefore the value of s will become 3 right again we are going to execute the statement now again 3 is less than n therefore we have to make i i plus plus so in that case again the value of i will become 3 right therefore it is s is equal to s plus i hence it is going to be 3 plus 3 is equal to 6 therefore the value of i s will become 6 right so next time the value of s is s will come uh, this 6 is less than equal to n right so the value of i is going to be increased the value of i will come 4 so it is s is equal to s plus i hence this is going to be uh, s is equal to s plus i therefore it is going to be 4 plus 6 that means 4 plus 6 is equal to 10 therefore the value of s will come 10 in the next statement fine again we are going to execute this therefore the value of i will come 5 right so it is going to be s is equal to s plus i hence the value will be 15 So we are going to again do this, right? So therefore, the value of s, is, s will come 10 plus 5 s 15. Now this way the value of s is growing. Now can you identify? Is there any pattern where according to which the value of s is growing? If you see the first term, it is a sum of first term one term in the sequence. The second term it is a sum of first two terms in the sequence. The third term it is the first three terms in the sequence. the fourth term it is a sum of four terms in the sequence the fifth term it is a sum of first five terms in a sequence right in the same way if we are going to increment this then we can identify that at some point of time it is going to become sum of first k terms in a sequence sum of first k terms in a sequence fine and then what is the sum of first k terms in a sequence the sum of first k terms is k into k plus 1 by 2 right as you know uh, this is k into k plus 1 by 2 first k natural numbers see first k terms 1 plus 2 natural numbers 1 plus 2 plus 3 sum of first three natural numbers 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 sum of first first four natural numbers So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 sum of first five natural numbers the same way it is k into k plus 1 by 2 which is sum sum of first k natural numbers and when will this condition will become false this condition will become false when this sum is going to exceed the value of n that means this condition will be false when we can say k into k plus 1 by 2 is greater than n if k is equal to k plus 1 by 2 is greater than n then this condition will be false till that time how many times the loop ran 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव अप टू सो ऑन के टाइम्स सो टिल दैट टाइम द लूप इज गोइंग टू रन के टाइम्स इफ यू कैन आइडेंटिफाई हाउ मेनी टाइम्स द लूप इज गोइंग टू रन देन वी कैन आइडेंटिफाई वट इज द टाइम कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ दिस फंक्शन फाइन नाउ टिल दिस टाइम यू कैन सी हाउ मेन टाइम्स द लूप इज गोइंग टू रन वी हैव के स्क्वायर प्लस के बाय टू इज गोइंग टू बी ग्रेटर देन एन राइट अगेन इन दिस केस द बिगेस्ट टर्म इज के स्क्वायर सो वी कैन इग्नोर के एन के के एन टू therefore till this time uh, in this case we can say assume that k should be greater than under root n therefore this go loop is going to run under root n times fine now let us take the second example in this case you can see we have int i and count is equal to 0 fine we have i is equal to 1 i into i is less than equal to n and i plus plus and then we have count plus plus if you can see this count variable it is not affecting the value of i the only thing which is affecting the value of i is this i plus plus statement and this i into i statement right so it is going to be i is equal to 1 i plus plus i, I into i and i is i so initially what is the value of i i is 1 now 1 is 1 into 1 is 1 square is less than n condition true we are going to execute this next time the value of i will come 2 therefore this condition is going to check 2 square is less than n so again it is going to be executed next time the value 5 will come 3 so this loop is going to check 3 square right next time the value 5 will come 4 the this loop is going to check 4 square next time the value of i will come 5 therefore this loop is going to check 5 square next time the value of i will come 6 therefore this loop is going to check 6 square up to so on this loop is going to run let us suppose k square times Now, when this condition will be false, this condition will be false when we can say that k square is greater than n. Till that time, how many times this loop is going to run? This loop is going to run under root n times. Fine. Therefore, the, in this case also, the time complexity is order of under root n. Fine. Okay. Now, in these two cases, you can see this loop is going to run at minimum under root n times, at maximum under root n times. Again, this loop is going to run at minimum under root n times, at maximum under root n times. Therefore, in these two cases, we have omega notation, which is also valid. We have theta notation, which is also valid. That means we can write the uh, the time complexity of this function as theta of n under root n. We can write the time complexity of this function as theta of under root n by because the min the lower bound and the upper bound in these two functions is going to be same. Fine. Now let us take the third example. In the third example, we have i is equal to n by two. That means the initial value of i is n by two, and i is less than equal to n and i plus plus. If you see, we are starting with the value of i with n by two. We are in, every time we are incrementing the value of i with one, and this condition will be false. The value of i will be become greater than n. Till that time, how many times this loop is going to run? This loop is going to run order of n times. Why? Because this is this condition will be true. Up to n by two times, but we can ignore the constants, which is by two constant. We can we just can take the value as order of n times, right? Now in this condition, how many times the loop is going to run? In this case, you can see the value of j is starting from one, and this condition is n by two plus one, and every time j is incrementing by the value which is one. So next time the value of j will come n by two plus two. Next time the value of j will come n by two plus three. Next time the value of j will come n by two plus four up to so on. Therefore, every time the value of j is incrementing by one. Fine. And this loop is going to run again, going to run n by two times, which is equal to order of n only. Fine. Now, if you take this the innermost for loop, we have already done this example, right? Here, how many times this k loop will run? It is going to run order of log n base two times, which is equal to order of log n times. So this is going to run order of log n times, right? Therefore, how many times this statement will be executed? This is going to be executed order of n multiplied by order of n multiplied by order of log n, which is equal to order of n square log n times. Fine. I hope it is clear to you. Now, now let us take these three examples. I have taken these examples from the same book. Now, if you see the first case, we have For i is equal to n by two, i is less than equal to n, i plus plus. 
we have seen this case before also so this is in this case it is going to take order of n times this for loop is going to be executed order of n times fine because why because uh, every time uh, this schedule will be executed n by 2 times but we are going to ignore the by 2 constant okay so now in this case you, you can see the value of j is incrementing by a factor of 2 that means every time the j is multipli multiplied by 2 right so what will happen in this case initially the value of j was 1 next time the value of j will come 2 next time the value of j will come 2 square next time the value of j will come 2 cube next time the value of j will come 2 raised to power 4 up to so on let us suppose that it is 2 raised to power k now when this condition will be false when this condition will be false when 2 raised to power k is greater than n right till that time how many times this j loop is going to run it is going to run 2 raised to power 0 2 raised to power 1 2 raised to power 2 2 raised to power 3 2 raised to power 4 up to 2 raised to power k minus 1 times that means it is going to run k times fine if you can identify what is the value of k therefore we, are k, we can identify how many times this for loop is going to run so what is the value of j in this case we have to take log on both sides so it will be k log 2 base 2 should be greater than log n base 2 and this is actually 1 this so it is k should be greater than log n base 2 times hence this for loop is going to run order of log n times fine now if you take the third example then third case in this case and this case both are exactly the same therefore in this case also this for loop is going to run order of log n times right now how many times this count is going to be executed this count is going to be executed order of n multiplied by order of log n multiplied by order of log n that means it is going to be executed order of n multiplied by order of log n multiplied by order of log n which is equal to order of n log n log square n order of n log square n fine now let us take the second example now in this case you can see this is if n is equal to 1 then return that means at minimum how many times this for this function is going to be executed this function is going to be this statement is going to be executed only once when uh, the value of n is 1 that means the minimum bound or what is the lower bound is basically order of 1 because of this case right in this case also if I, if, uh, if I say that how many times this function is executed that means I, I, I wanted to mean that how many times these for loops are being executed fine now in this case uh, for i is equal to 1 i is less than equal to n i plus plus right how many times this for loop will be executed it is going to be executed order of n time we have already seen this then how many times this for loop is going to be executed now if you see this for loop you can see this condition is going to be true order of n times but we have a break statement here because of this break statement every time we are going to encounter this for loop and every time we are going to execute this for loop we, this break statement will be executed therefore every time it is going to be executed only once here the effective for loop or the for loop which is going to affect the value is only the outer for loop because inner for loop is not running n times it is only run, running once it is equivalent to saying executing only one single statement right therefore this program is going to take order of n time because of this order for loop and not because of this n